As a hacker, I can inject this code into a web page to see what other sites you visit. I can learn your online banking site or your healthcare provider. Whether you visit sites for certain politicians or issues like gun rights or abortion rights. Catholic sites or Islamic sites. When we call this hacking, we're concerned. And yet internet companies track all of our online behavior. 58 sites used cookies to watch me visit GameSpot, ESPN, Bank of America, Planned Parenthood, and a Black Lives Matter Facebook group. Cookies have been tracking us since last century. The New York Times called them surveillance files, which seemed far-fetched in 1999, but it's our reality today. Cookies are everywhere. Go to the top 100 sites and click two links. You will receive 12,000 cookies. You can delete cookies, but persistent trackers will respawn them. Thankfully, the FCC finds American companies who do this, but sadly, it doesn't solve the whole problem. Because trackers share cookie IDs. So, even when you delete your cookies, if a single tracker respawns one, it effectively merges all of your history for all of their partners. So what about incognito or private browsing? They'll keep your parents or your spouse from knowing if you visit the same porn sites that they do. And they also delete cookies when you close the window. So they protect you from cookie-based tracking. Some trackers are starting to turn to device fingerprints. Your device sends data about itself to the sites you visit and the apps you use to optimize content. But embedded trackers can use the same data to create a fingerprint for your device. So they can identify you even without cookies. But whether it's cookies or fingerprints, trackers want to track you across all of your devices. Services can see you when you sign in across devices. Facebook and Google boast to advertisers that they see over a billion people across devices. But hidden trackers can do the same thing. They watch your work computer connect from your office alongside your mobile phone. They follow your mobile phone home and see your personal computer connect alongside it. They can check the latitude and the longitude of these connections and that all of these devices share common online behavior. So now they know you are one person behind all of these devices. It's hard to know how many trackers have this data because it's done invisibly. But all of these companies offer cross-device tracking services. Axiom, the one in the middle, claims to have behavioral insight into over 1.2 billion email addresses. There are very few regulations. America is a buyer beware environment for privacy. Consumers are expected to negotiate their own privacy by reading privacy policies and selecting appropriate services. So most Americans have resigned. 58% of Americans said they want to have more control over what online marketers can learn about them but they've come to accept they have little control. We've developed a case of Stockholm Syndrome with online trackers. So we tell ourselves we have nothing to hide. And while there's all kinds of witty retorts to this mentality, even when we say it, we don't believe it. Everyone wore clothes here today. At least, I think you did. I, the lights are kind of blinding. We all have doors on our bathrooms. We have blinds on our windows. We have passwords on our email and our social accounts. We clearly want our privacy both offline and online. So maybe we've told ourselves it's just marketing. But is it? While at the University of Cambridge Psychometrics Center, Michael Kaczynski created the My Personality Facebook app. Users could fill out a questionnaire based on the ocean psychological model. They created the largest data set combining psychometrics and Facebook profiles ever, and with it, they were able to tell a person's skin color, sexual orientation, religious or political affiliations, cigarette, alcohol, or drug use. With enough data, they could do this more accurately than the person's own coworkers, family, friends, and partners. Strategic Communications Laboratories asked Kaczynski for access to the My Personality database. He refused when he learned that SCL is a big data analysis company focused on influencing elections. Its subsidiaries have helped the Nepalese monarch against rebels and participated in elections from Ukraine to Nigeria. One of its subsidiaries is Cambridge Analytica. 
They bought online behavior data, including data from Axiom, and combined it with other personal data to create ocean psychological models for every American. They combined this with electoral rolls to learn our needs and our fears combined with our home addresses and our voting habits. Cambridge Analytica worked on both the Brexit and the Trump campaigns. And while we don't know the extent to which they use psychometrics, we do know that they paid for Facebook timeline ads targeting specific profiles. They showed African Americans videos of Hillary Clinton calling black men predators. So is this marketing or is this manipulation? So if you're feeling more concerned now, that's good. It's natural. We have a physiological need for privacy. Mammals in particular respond poorly to surveillance. We consider it a threat because animals in the wild are tracked by predators and it makes us feel like prey. Philosophers and sociologists have warned that surveillance fosters manipulation, conformity, and submission. But take a breath because for all of their power and money, trackers use the same internet that we do. Among other things, Edward Snowden surprisingly revealed that the NSA is not made of magic. They use the humble cookie for tracking. So there's some simple steps you can take to protect yourselves from even the most sophisticated trackers. First, use private browsing more. It deletes cookies, and Firefox private browsing includes tracking protection that blocks connections to known trackers. Privacytools.io is a website with suggestions for privacy tools ranging from operating systems to VPNs, Tor, and email services. Speaking of email, 10minutemail.com creates a temporary 10-minute email address for those times you have to click an email link to try a new app or service. But really, don't give out your personal information if you don't need to. If your name, address, phone, or email are not required, just keep them to yourselves. Now personally, I like to hide my real online behavior in a mess of fake behavior. I don't really like just hiding because it makes me feel like I'm walking on eggshells. And if I make a single misstep, all of my data is going to be back in the hands of trackers. And I like my privacy to be a little bit of a protest. Track me not sends random search phrases to search engines. So even if I'm using a tracking search engine, they don't know if I searched for how to defend myself against online privacy or why Kim Kardashian wants a third baby. Similarly, ad nauseum hides ads but invisibly clicks every single one of them. So anyone tracking my ad clicks thinks that I'm into everything from guns and cosmetics to CrossFit and My Little Pony. So you don't need to give up your privacy to go online. Too many of us have resigned to that false choice. But you're here at the University of Tulsa, at the beginning of the 21st century, when we're just starting to wrestle with this issue. There are opportunities to work and research on online privacy right here. But even if you don't dedicate yourself to it full time, when you go online, you can protect your privacy and the privacy of others. Thank you.